You can hear the waves crashing down below. And some birds tweeting. Just a gentle breeze. Looks like a whole bunch of us are going to the same place, doesn't it? All backpacked up. Hey Krug, are we excited? Very. Yes, we are. It's last minute preparations. Very light winds around, which is always nice. A little bit of swell through your pants. The whitewash over there is pretty normal, so uh, don't be too stressed about it. See the buoy in there through the trees. Oh, beautiful. Big verandas. Surveyor's hut. Night one. Any eggs?
so good. <laughs> um, expert team effort. This is when the joke will emerge from the pouch, so feel free to ignore me and use this back. Absolutely allow. Pretty happy with them. What a great place to live. past 100 metres or so, you've been walking through wombat country. Dry, open, eucalypt woodland with low shrubs and grassy and old fallen logs and branches. Great for sheltering. Of course, we all know that wombat poo comes out in these weird cubes. Not this big, but definitely a strange kind of poo. Helicopter operations. Like cockatoos. Hey guys! Guys! Come back! So those are the cliffs we went around yesterday in the boat. What do you reckon, Daniel? No words. We well, felt quite happy when we've done that and so we did the overland because I put it in today with that, but I probably would have found it. Okay, Where the toilets are at. Now we're there. So one of the highlights of Munro Hut is this is the one place on the three capes like you get to have a shower and it says welcome to our bush shower you'll figure it out for yourselves.
but essentially you fill your bucket with hot water, transfer it to the shower bag, hoist it up and enjoy. Put hot water on tap. Hmm, not the best hygiene standards, but anyhow. Just joking, that's amazing. Let's go through here. Go through here. Here's a little shower cubicle. And there's a cold water tap in here. And you pour your bucket of warm water in here. And then you hoist, hoist, hoist. And you lift around here. And then you will just twist this and you have a shower. Amazing. Good to turn it off again when you finish the next person. Yeah, so there's two showers. Quite private, but as you can see, open to the outside. It's a bush shower. Beautiful. Think he's cleaning the floor. This is the backpack shed where everybody leaves their packs while they walk out to the pillow and back. Here's my little pack under there. Then we're off. Hopefully the video will capture some of the cloud rolling through. As she oaks sigh, as the breeze plays about her needles, the plaintive call of a black parawong echoing across the valley, a rustle in the leaf litter of a scurrying skink, the busy chatter of feeding unwinking. The crunch of gravel by passing walkers. The high trill of a flame robin calling it to its mate. The buzz of bees amongst fragrant blossom. The sharp screech of a black cockatoo flying overhead. The clack of loose bark as it bangs against its branch. What are you guys now? Bloody hell. This is the start of the snake. A two and a half kilometer stretch of duckboard should make for some pretty easy walking. I believe the head is at the other end. We shall see. Like nature's bonsais, these plants are twisted and shaped by the harsh environment they try to survive in. Right on the coast, yeah. Like this is at the Cape Pillar. That's where we're heading. It's really great that they've built these boardwalks. I mean it's um obviously it makes it easier for hiking which is not the aim. The main aim is to protect the environment because you get people walking across here every day in this fragile landscape and it soon becomes destroyed. This way it gets preserved for people to enjoy for many years to come.
think this is called like Perilous Pond or Perilous Pool, something like that, when I was reading the book last night. Joyce was the youngest daughter of Andy and Myrtle Mitchell, the assistant white keeper and his wife. Myrtle had no more medication to give her daughter. The last of it, given to a child of one of the other island family. The Lighthouse Journal briefly tells the story. Saturday, 16th of March, 11 a.m., Mrs. Mitchell and two children left Tasman in the fishing boat. Six days after Andy arrived in Hobart, little Joyce died. We're getting closer and closer to the edge and to the blade, but we're still walking through forests. It's just beautiful. And around to Beauty Cape Hoi, which is where we'll be walking to tomorrow. On top there, I see one person standing. Hmm. <laughs> Looks scary. Oh, it's a speedboat. That's not the boat we're on the other day, is it?
the snake. Two and a half k's of boardwalk. Excellent. Turns out it's actually perditious ponds. Not perilous as I first thought. Hard to imagine we've just walked all the way out there. Uh, we're just about back to the hut where we left our backpacks today and it's been just a mind-blowing day. Oh boy, these views are second to none. And it's just really amazing to go visit these places um, that you can only go by foot. You know, the power of your own legs, great company, the track's fabulous. Oh boy, can't wait to put this into a video. Even though there's 48 people leave every day, there's no time when you feel crowded. You know, people sort of walk along at their own pace. See, at the moment, I'm on all my own. I'd say I'm lost for words, but clearly I've still got a few words left of it. If you haven't done three cakes before, highly recommended. So today we've gone from Munro Hut, left just after 7.30 this morning, went out to Cape Pillar, walked along the blade, actually we did that the other way around, we walked along the blade, then we went out to Cape Pillar and I um, took a bit of a break and came back. So at the moment we'll be getting close to 15 k's into the day and we've got about four to go to where we're staying tonight. Could not be happier. Ah oh, yes, and there is a very welcome sign of the hut with the bags and my crew. Daniel's a good lad, got my bag out for me already. to Kana, 10 minutes. Woohoo! We're going up over that mountain tomorrow, Mount Fortescue. And suddenly, here we are at Ritakuna hut. These huts are built so beautifully in with the landscape that you don't know you're there until you're there. I'm just going to wash my feet here, or my boots, sorry not my feet. This is to stop the spread of cinnamon fungus and among other things. Oh, here we go. Ainsley, briefing at 5.30ish. Grab a deck chair and rest those feet. Okay. Tomorrow's forecast, partly cloudy. West to south westerly, 15 to 20 kilometres an hour, becoming 20 to 30, 17 to 22 degrees. Better mark my name off today, because I forgot yesterday. They were waiting for me. Show you what it's like inside the bunk room. So, there's eight beds. Four top, four bottom, 
There's my little cubby hole down there. There's places to hang coats, places to your packs. And great views. Very comfortable. Such a luxury to be sleeping on. Look at the size of that mattress. Memory foam. Ooh. Definitely luxurious. A lot of people heading off for day four, the last day. What a beautiful place this is. Walk down to the helipad. The you can hardly see them from down here, they're so perfectly blended. I'm not sure if the GoPro will pick up on this too well, but here's an orchid growing on this mossy stump. And all these leaves around here, there'll be more orchids emerging. And this one here is about to about to flower. By 19th century English poet Lord Tennyson famously described nature in his ways, he was most likely referring to wolves and bears rather than the mini beasts that secretly and silently attack right beneath our feet. Yes, under every log lurks a mini equivalent of a wolf or a bear. In every clod of earth, an anaconda or cobra. Relax on the velvet lounge while we introduce you to some of the fiercest forest mini beasts. It would be epic if it was just a gentle shower, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. All the water just yeah. dripping off all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Howdy. It's just that sort of place, isn't it? You just want to film and take photos, soak it all in. Well, I'm thinking this must be another little story seat. Oh, that's grand. That's like a throne, not a seat. A it's a story throne. <laughs> so this book that Ali's flicking through is a storybook about three capes. And there's all these little chairs at intervals. So we'll be taking turns to read the story. What's this one called, Ali? Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. Lift a bit, just a bit <laughs> higher. <laughs> you can see it all now. It's amazing, two trees growing there together. When gazing at this sublime spectacle, I was almost tempted to exclaim. It is worthwhile to travel 16,000 miles to see such a scene as this. Another lovely raised boardwalk. I'm not sure how much of the track would be boardwalk as opposed to natural formed track, but at a guess I would say somewhere between 20 and 30 percent.
quite different terrain here. It's all sandy. We're not far from the edge of the um, sea cliffs out there, but well protected by the trees. Every now and again a view opens up. We can stop and go, ooh, um. Yes, that's very good advice. Quite frequently signs along here. Do not be the person on the right. Never more. Never more. <laughs> If you look closely, you can see dolerite on the upper slopes of Mount Fortescue, above the coastal mudstone flush siltstone. You can also see at the water's edge grey dolerite, scree, piles of smaller rocks and boulders and fractures and rock pools. Poachers. We're pretty big on fish in Tassie. Tassie is the largest by value producer, producer of seafood in Australia. With our most valuable wild fisheries being abalone and rock, rock lobster and for aquaculture, salmon and oysters. Seafood contributes to over a third of the state's agricultural production. Heading out to Cape Hoy now, little side trip. So it should take up to two hours on the way back to Fortescue Bay. This what is happening. This would usually mean, at a minimum, maintaining the status quo. But we knew that these plants liked the disturbance. We did walking things. <laughs> what did you do? Got on a boat. <laughs> I don't think they care. So that is the famous totem pole. Wish there was somebody climbing today. These would have been dropped here by helicopter. They'd be part of the track works. All downhill now, nearly all the way back down into Fortescue Bay and the end of the track. It's been amazing. Oh.
with four days. That's it, the end, or the photo finish. Yeah. We're not quite at the end yet. There's beautiful Fortescue Bay just down there.